Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'd like to welcome everyone today. Hi everyone, my name's Scott Hebbard and I'm the Communications Manager at Spark Systems. And I'm very pleased to preview Enterprise Architect 17 here for you today. This is uh, the first webinar in a series. And this series will look at a variety of Enterprise Architect 17 features. So it's going to cover everything from time aware modeling and data warehousing to model based perspective sets and much, much more. So today we're going to be looking at smart placements and some of the new drag and drop capabilities in more detail. But this only scratches the surface as far as new features is concerned. Some of the notable features in Enterprise Architect 17 include but are not limited to model based perspective sets. There's new accelerators, there's data warehouse schemas, enterprise data warehousing, time aware modeling improvements, including a brand new window. Some of the things that we're going to look at today, like diagram smart placement and diagram drag and drop. There's some enhancements to external data integration, especially around uh, uh, Office, Visual Studio, and uh, um, Eclipse. There's enhancements to the uh, code miner and a number of other features. So let's start with model-based perspective. So model-based perspectives technology allows you to tailor your uh, user interface so you can specify things such as uh, what ribbons are available and what technology is available. And you can design an enterprise architect to suit your specific needs depending on your role and the tasks that you consume. Uh, you can customize your toolbox, ribbons, toolboxes, and uh, diagram types based on a set of criteria, and you can model this. There are a number of different uh, accelerators uh, for application portfolio management, business capability modeling, and technology portfolio management. So this allows you to provide the exact tools, templates, and workflows required for all of these critical areas. There's a whole lot of new data warehousing technology, uh, so support for dedicated data warehouse uh, databases such as uh, Amazon Redshift and BigQuery, Snowflake and uh, hybrid and analytical databases such as some of the tools from Apache and MongoDB and uh, obviously access to some of the traditional databases such as Firebird, MS Access, MySQL, Oracle and many, many more. So some of these are brand new technologies and uh, things that people will find uh, really uh, exciting and innovative to help uh, take care of some of the data warehouse modeling challenges. Uh, obviously today we're gonna to focus a little bit on smart placement. So um, there's updated smart placement features, which can ensure that you can uh, create uh, very visually appealing diagrams including enhanced snap points, visual guides, flexible layout, smart placement options, edge and center snapping and smooth alignment, and much, much more. Um, and you can see there are some examples of the code miner and some enhanced support for um, uh, accessibility within Enterprise Architect. So Enterprise Architect 17 from Spark Systems offers a range of enhanced productivity and collaboration. Key updates include advances in data warehousing, enabling better management and integration of data repositories. Uh, the enhanced time aware modeling feature allows you to track and visualize changes and you can take snapshots and compare those snapshots. Some of the comparison tools have been improved. Uh, ProLaborate has been significantly improved, offering enhanced tools for collaboration, model sharing and stakeholder engagement. Uh, which uh, streamlines workflows and ensures consistency across projects. So these updates make Enterprise Architect 17 a powerful tool for enterprise projects, project managers, business analysts, providing comprehensive support for managing complex projects. The combination of advanced data management, time-based modeling and improved collaborative features ensures that users can maintain a clear and consistent view of their projects, facilitating better decision-making and strategic planning. So now I'd like to do a bit of a deep dive into some of the Spark placement features. So you'll note that uh, there are new snap points added, so you can snap uh, to the midpoint between two objects. 
and you can snap to the same height or width as other objects in the diagram. New visual guides have been added to show what snapping is being applied, so you can make sure that things are the same size, same height, same width. So on screen, we have a very simple uh, class diagram, and I'm creating a new class called Credit Card to go into this abstract class model. Now, you'll note the blue visual guides, and so what this does is it allows you to uh, snap and check um, so that you can snap an element to, for example, the bottom of an existing element or the top of an existing element. Um, once you start using these new visual guides, it makes creating diagrams much, much easier. And it makes it really easy to align elements to the top, the bottom, the side, the left. And um, also because it shows you the exact size of other elements on the diagram, uh, and you can see the blue um, diagram here makes it easy to adjust to the size to match existing elements. So you can create a new element and you can get the height and width uh, exactly right so it matches everything on the diagram. Um, I have to say I've been using this feature for quite some time now and it's, uh, it's amazing. It makes it really easy to ensure that you've got equidistant gaps between elements on a diagram and it's uh, so easy and quick to use that you can snap elements and it makes your diagrams look uh, much more visually appealing and it makes it easier for you to quickly build diagrams from scratch and you can compare element widths with ease and you can very quickly make your diagrams all uh, fit and work well together. Um, and, um, on this class diagram, I'm trying to um, show uh, the blue lines, which allow you to adjust your height and the width. Uh, under the layout ribbon, there's some new features. Um, there's an uh, alignment uh, drop-down box, and uh, this allows you to, you know, show grids and to select multiple elements at once, and allows you to snap things. Uh, in the uh, middle of objects, you can see there's uh, capacity here for alignment and there's a variety of different tools that can be used. Um, the new alignment panel um, at the bottom there, that little square uh, has um, a drop down menu with new options, but there are lots of options there so that you can align things to the left, align things to the right, you can space evenly horizontally or vertically and you can uh, very quickly um, make changes, um, which is quite powerful. So here's the new drop-down menu. So you can see you can enable the, um, the standard grid, you can show the grid, and all of your smart placement uh, capabilities uh, can be enabled there, including multi-select, showing the guides, element bounds, same size, relative spacing, and midpoints. So, uh, all of those things um, make it really easy to um, modify your diagrams. So I used the class diagram last time. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show how some of these features might be useful. We've got a diagram called Manage Users. We're adding a few new requirements. Obviously, if you just press Control click, um, once you've created one element, you can create multiple elements. So if you're creating a, a requirements diagram, you can very quickly add you know, five or 10 different requirements, um, name them, um, update their properties. And so what I wanted to do is show some of the options in the layout toolbar to show how you can uh, easily modify these. So you can see with uh, one click, you can um, align to the left, you can align to the right, you can resize. Um, and um, once again, using the grids, it's really easy to get things so that they're the same size as other elements on screen. Um, I can drag all the requirements together. I can uh, select multiple elements and uh, drag and um, uh, click them into place as well. And I can space evenly uh, vertically and I can make a diagram neat. Uh, tidy and look visually appealing with just a few button clicks. So it's uh, really quick, easy to do.
Uh, there's a few uh, new features which allow you to export journals and uh, some of your um, uh, notes uh, to a file. So here we've got a, a journal and journal and my diary entries can now be published as a document. So it can be published as an RTF document or a docx document. So simply uh, use the menu system, save the journal to a file and you can see that you can select uh, which entries uh, you would like to publish. So you can publish based on a limit or between certain dates, or you can publish all of your journal articles and get them into a, a document which might be useful for reporting. Uh, so that's a <coughs> another new feature in Enterprise Architect um, 17, which we find useful. Uh, there's a new Visual Studio 2022 theme, and this new theme allows you to make Enterprise Architect uh, look uh, visually appearing, uh, appealing, and you can make changes to the way uh, it looks and feels. So here's uh, Enterprise Architect on screen, and from the start menu, you can see I can select a new visual style, and there's many to choose from. Uh, some of the developers like some of the uh, darker themes, uh, it helps you know, uh, save power and helps with uh, glare on the screen. Uh, so you can select the new Visual Studio 2022 style. Uh, there's a number of themes under this. Um, now I particularly like the fact that you can go and change uh, the colour and find the colour that um, suits and apply that. Um, but there are also um, a number of different options for some more dark themes. And I find, especially if you're a light bean, you're staring at Enterprise Architect for eight hours a day, some of the dark grey and darker themes, um, I think they're um, uh, better on the eye and if you're using a laptop obviously it um, helps save a bit of uh, uh, power and uh, it's uh, quite nice as well. So oh, there's different themes, uh, there's there's white, there's dark grey, there's uh, the uh, sapphire. So the, uh, the new um, Office 2022 uh, theme will fit um, in and you've got the uh, Visual Studio theme as well um, that are all available uh, to use. Um, so you've got some uh, nice new uh, themes there that can be applied within Enterprise Architect. Um, so the next thing I want to look at is have a look at some of these new diagram drag and drop features. Now once upon a time, if you wanted to make a change, you'd have to select the connector, delete the connector, add a new element, add new connectors. But now you can just drag an element onto an existing diagram. You'll note that when the review order element is on the connector, the connector turns red to show that it's selected. And then when I release the mouse, it automatically adds that in place. So you can easily add elements in place and uh, this can be done with relative ease. So uh, whether it's a flowchart diagram or requirements diagram or use case diagram, I find this is really, really powerful because it makes it easy to make changes, to make modifications, to update, to add, to edit, and to, um, to change your diagram and it's really easy. So you just wait till you get the red highlight, you release and um, away you go. So here we have a, um, a class diagram without attributes. I want to add a new uh, products class. Once again, I drag until the red highlight occurs. I release and I've updated my diagram. So it's a non-destructive way of adding elements. You don't have to remove elements. So I'm trying to do a few different examples on a deployment diagram, on a class diagram, on a flow chart to show how easy it is to add and update and, uh, and modify. And um, just like the Spark placement tools, once you start using it for a little while, it makes um, the creation of your models and your diagrams much easier. So the next thing we're gonna do is have a look at not just dragging onto a connector, but adding an activity to a state machine. So it's more than just connectors. Uh, there have been new features added for a variety of different um, diagram types within Enterprise Architect, and I'm gonna show some now. 
So here we've got some activities. So I'm dragging it onto the state and I can add that as an entry or a do activity or an exit and it gets automatically added to the state machine. Um, so uh, this is taking it straight from the browser, dragging it onto the diagram. So some of the things that we've looked at, we've looked at uh, smart placement tricks and tricks. So we've looked at grids and guides that make it easier to model elements and to make sure things are the same size. We've looked at new um, drop menu for the layout ribbon. We've looked at smart placements and how it makes it easier to make visually appealing diagrams. We've looked at uh, horizontal and vertical positioning in order to adjust your diagrams. A multi-select is now available, so you can select five or six elements on the screen and snap them in place. We've looked at drag and drop tricks. So all you need to do is wait until a connector is highlighted in red and you can add an element. It allows you to add elements in a non-destructive manner. Uh, you can easily add classes, requirements, and um, much, much more. There's no need to delete the connector and editing diagrams has become much easier and simpler to do. So let's have a look at some of the drag and drop uh, capabilities and look at some of the features that aren't just connectors. So this time we're going to drag an activity onto a state machine as a behavior. Um, so last time we dragged onto the state, but this time we're getting a trigger and we're going to drag it onto uh, the connector. And um, using this, we can automatically update. So, with these features, um, what they do is they streamline and make it much faster to um, do modeling tasks and allows you to quickly modify things. So you can see trigger A is now um, being dragged on and um, under the properties, if we have a look at the connector, you can see um, you know the trigger is there and it's uh, now listed. Um, and if I select the connector and go across and have a look, um, this is nice and easy. So rather than having to go into the properties and manually set the trigger um, and set constraints, you can see that the trigger is now here just using a simple drag and drop uh, capability. So <clears throat> once again, this is all about making it easier to build diagrams, easier to model, um, easier to drag and drop elements onto the screen and um, allowing you to build uh, your models and your diagrams quickly and easily and um, without um, much drama. So this time we're going to take trigger B and we're going to drop that down. Um, and uh, once again, the uh, properties and the, the trigger details on the right of screen uh, will be updated accordingly. Um, so <clears throat> uh, the things to note is that um, once you've selected a connector, it'll be highlighted in red, um, but there are some other capabilities. Uh, it's always a good idea if uh, you click on the help menu and you go down and you look at the readme file, <clears throat> you can find out about some of the, uh, the changes that have happened with Enterprise Architect 17 and what kind of drag and drop capabilities are now available. This time we're going to drag an operation onto a sequence message. So you can see we've got some methods over here and we're going to drag them onto our sequence diagram and they automatically get updated. So uh, here we've uh, dragged a couple of methods on and rather than having to go into the properties and manually change these things, we can simply drag and drop onto a diagram and automatically update. So a lot of these new drag and drop capabilities and a lot of these smart placement capabilities and these features really make it um, much easier and um, um, they're a nice, powerful tool for updating your diagrams and uh, modifying them and uh, making changes. So uh, here we've got a, a signal and we're dropping that signal onto our sequence diagram and uh, that diagram is being automatically updated.
Uh, here we have an internal block diagram for our uh, SysML users. Um, and you can now drag um, items onto the ports. So and see if we uh, drill into our blocks, we can place items uh, onto the diagram and they will automatically update as well. So uh, not only have we got enhancements for some of our uh, UML diagrams, such as a sequence diagram, a class diagram and a requirements diagram, but we've also got some enhancements for uh, things such as a, uh, a internal block diagram in SysML and a few other features as well. So um, all of these things um, have helped uh, make some enhancements. And so I think you'll find when you download uh, um, Enterprise Architect 17 Beta, uh, there's lots of changes to things, including the interface, how you create diagrams. And although there's a number of um, great uh, new features around timeware modeling and data warehousing and things like that. The the day-to-day uh, -day usage of Enterprise Architects has been made uh, much simpler, much easier using some of these new features. Um, uh, here we have a, a class diagram and uh, you can see that we can uh, drag class onto the flow and so now class three flows between class one and class six. So once again, um, you can drag, it, drag and drop a classifier onto an item flow and that will now automatically be updated too. Um, so all of these features um, provide some innovative uh, new approaches to diagramming within Enterprise Architect 17. Um, and uh, the other thing that's uh, useful to know is that the with Enterprise Architect 17, uh, not only has diagramming been improved, but you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, templates that are available so you can get modeling and start modeling uh, quickly and easily. So here we're adding a uh, signal. So we can drop a signal onto a send signal accept event and uh, the drag and drop features are automatically updated. Uh, early on, we had some questions from users about will this um, webinar be made available online and yes it will be made available on the Spark Systems website and it will also be made available on the Spark Systems YouTube site and um, furthermore a few people have said uh, can I get access to Enterprise Architect 17 uh, and uh, the answer is uh, yes it's available for immediate uh, download uh, from the registered users section so what I wanted to do today is just do a, a brief introduction to um, some of the uh, user interface capabilities, some of the smart placement features, uh, some of the new drag and drop capabilities, and uh, start to uh, preview Enterprise Architect 17. There are lots and lots of great new features that are coming that we're going to talk about in future webinars. Um, and you know, for example, some of the new accelerators around uh, application portfolio management, some of our customers find them really, really powerful. Some of their uh, enterprise data warehousing uh, technologies um, provide some fantastic new features and capabilities. So what I'd like to do now is just have a look at uh, some of the questions. Um, so there's a question here about how to remove an object that was inserted into a connector. So I um, have spoken to um, the developers and some of the feedback from um, the beta is that uh, an undo capability uh, would be quite valuable. So this is something that's been flagged with the developers. So. Uh, speaking of uh, feedback around um, Enterprise Architect 17, uh, if you've used uh, Enterprise Architect 17 beta, please um, uh, use the, um, the channels, the appropriate channels to submit feedback about um, 
and Prozac Tech 17. So if you have um, items such as that about um, removal and undo, uh, if there's something that you'd like um, clarification on, um, send us through some feedback and we'd love to hear that. Um, there's uh, another question um, about um, what's the expected release date of Enterprise Architect 17. So this is uh, the um, question that will often come up when I do a preview of Enterprise Architect 17 features. And uh, one of the things that we are always keen to do is to take feedback on board from our customers and from um, people that use Enterprise Architect on a daily basis. Uh, so it's uh, very difficult to give uh, an exact release date, uh, but I am very pleased that everybody today that has access to the registered user section of the Spark Systems website can download Enterprise Architect 17 and start using it today. Um, many people will often um, rename the folder name and install the beta so that they can run the, the beta next to their existing version of Enterprise Architect 16 or 16.1 or 15 or whatever you happen to be using. Um, so that they can test it and try it. But, um, you know, some of the model patterns just make life so much easier. Um, just the example that I did with the requirements diagram where you can go control click, control click, you can add five or six, you know, requirements or use cases or classes. You can change their names, you can automatically resize, you can grab multiple objects. You can select the drop down list from the uh, layout menu and you can apply a grid. All of these things make modeling and creating your diagrams really, really easy um, and uh, great. Um, so, um, the, um, there's a question about uh, some of the um, the uh, accelerators and I think in the future I'll probably be um, sitting down with uh, Nizam and doing a webinar where we might do a deep dive into some of the accelerators to show you uh, how they work, how they might be applied and um, how they might be relevant. So um, people wanting more information about that, um, we can certainly um, help provide that. Um, uh, in the uh, uh, in the future, so I'm happy to help out with that and uh, do another webinar. So uh, what I'd like to do is um, try and keep things to the half an hour. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for their attendance today. Uh, I would encourage everyone to uh, download the uh, Enterprise Architect 17 uh, beta. I'm going to uh, host and run another session uh, tonight where we'll cover uh, exactly the same uh, information, but it's at a time zone that'll probably be uh, better suited for some of our um, uh, European customers. Uh, so I look forward to uh, running another session then. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your continued uh, passion and love for Spark Systems and Spark Systems tools. We're all uh, very uh, proud and pleased that we've been able to get Enterprise Architect 17 beta released. Uh, we look forward to your feedback and um, I'm very pleased that I've been able to show you just the uh, scratching the surface of the Enterprise Architect 17 features that are new um, and that have been released, uh, starting with the drag and drop features and smart placement features. Uh, but I just want to let you know that there are plenty of more coming and much, much more um, capabilities. So uh, thank you once again, uh, take care of yourselves, uh, have a great week and uh, look forward to seeing you again in future webinars.